Welcome back to Crusader Kings 3. This is our Britannia playthrough, episode 24. When I say Britannia, I mean the Empire of Britannia. We started back in 867, uh, which is 200 years prior. So we've had 200 years of game time. And this is episode 24. We've gone from the humble Earl of Devon all the way up to the Emperor of Britannia. It's been a little while since I've played this because I've been very much into Grand Tactician. If you're new to this channel, check out my playlists. If you like Grand Strategy games, you may well enjoy the Grand Tactician playlists I've got on the go. Uh, in addition, we've also got two Crusader Kings 3 games ongoing. We've got the Tyrants of Sardinia and this one, which is the first ever playthrough I've I ever did. This is like the first time I've ever recorded gameplay or anything like that for an audience basically as, as small as that may be uh, but yeah so this is the first one and we're on episode 24 i have enjoyed the playthrough and i had been thinking about bringing it to a close because we've almost dominated britain i mean we've controlled most of it there's a few of these savage northern places still under uh, scottish control but other than that we control pretty much all of britannia uh, like all of Ireland, all of England, all of Wales, most of Scotland, or at least the bits that count. The Highlands, there's nothing there anyway. We control a bit of the coast here at Holland, uh, Frangia, not Frangia, um, Frisia, Frisia. We control that. Um, but, so I had been thinking about wrapping it up somewhere around here, but actually, I'm still enjoying the playthrough, and I mean, some people are still watching it. I mean, obviously not lots, but some. This is only a tiny channel, so if you are new here, it'd be great if you hit that subscribe button. So we help the channel grow. We're almost at 200 subscribers, which is awesome. But back to the game now. Uh, the the target I've got instead is actually I want to drive out the Muslim invader. Uh, they've conquered lots of southern France. They, con they uh, In fact, they have the kingdom of Aquitaine completely under control apart from this tiny little area. But they are these areas are under siege and they're at war with these guys. Uh, so what I would like to do, I would like to drive the Muslims out of southern Europe, basically because they have no business being there. And then potentially we can drive them out of Spain as well, if that's doable. I've never really done that kind of thing on this game, but uh, like I'm, I'm not a hugely experienced player at this game. As you'll know if you've watched any of the previous episodes, I make lots of mistakes, which I guess probably makes for very, like slightly interesting viewing, if annoying. But <laughs> um, anyway, right, so... That's enough blabbering on from me now. Uh, we're going to get started with the game. And we're going to start right off with this, right? So we are 68, so we're almost pretty much on death's door, to be honest. And our son died not too long ago. Uh, about five years ago. And his grandson, uh, his son, so our grandson, is looking to inherit the title. Well, he will be inheriting the title. But his wife is a leper. and has, They've only got one daughter. He's already 26. They've been married for a long, long time. Uh, so I think what we need to do is we need to try and get rid of this leper daughter. And to do that, we're going to murder her, basically. Yeah, 95% success chance. We have not done much in the way of murdering or anything like that. If you're into that kind of thing, then you should check out the Tyrants of Sardinia uh, playthrough I've got going on. But in this playthrough, we've done hardly any murder. But we're going to start a murder scheme on our son, our grandson's wife. To see if we can get rid of her and get him a better match. Because we don't need a leprous queen who's only given us one daughter. That's no good. And as we all know, since this is the medieval days, it can't possibly be the man's fault that uh, she's not had children. It must be the wife. <laughs> That's how things work back then. Anyway, uh, so we've ransomed a couple of these prisoners that we had at the end of the last episode. Ah, so we've finished... Promoting our culture and in his mon. That's up here. Uh, it's somewhere anyway. Being called a war. Liberty war. Fine. I'll say yes, but I don't think I'm actually going to send troops unless we really have to. Um, <clears throat> we are at peace with this guy. He used to be the king of Alba. Now he just hates us and he's the high chieftain of the isles so the scot it's fractured scotland because we usurped the claim basically for the kingdom i have not formed the kingdom of ireland i've not formed the kingdom of wales either or man and the isles or cornwall we don't i don't think we need to now something else i'm considering was a war 
against this guy because he will not accept vassalage. Uh, we can't even do it at the minute because he's at war with someone else. But I kind of want to. I want to push down in here and unite this. If we can, I would like to grow the empire. See if we can marry someone into this family. Our daughter, thirty-four. Oh, so she was married to the Doge of Venice, so he's obviously dead, I guess. And who's this guy? How can we... Our grandson and King Albrecht's Chancellor. Uh, so he's from like our more extended family. We could marry him in to, to this family. I mean, she's, she's a dwarf, but you know, that's, that's all right. Yeah, let's do that. See if we can make some more ties with these guys, with Brittany. Excellent. 18 prowess, pretty good, but we're a little short on money. Let's have a little look what he would want. 55. We're getting stress again. We're already quite stressed. I don't want to push him into his grave already. If we can, I want to stabilize the realm slightly before our grandson has to take over. Um, now, let's have a quick look at the grandson, actually. In terms of stats, I mean, he's pretty good at intrigue, and that's about it. Uh, poor and everything else. So it's not really... Oops, this guy died. He was our champion and bodyguard. Uh, but yeah, he's not really very impressive being raided. I hope here in Scotland. Uh... Do we need to do anything about that? I mean, he's going to raid this place no matter what. I guess we could raise the local army and make sure he doesn't go anywhere else. It's unlikely we're going to get there on time. I mean, we definitely won't. But, like I say, we could stop him going elsewhere and raiding out of the lands. Uh, she's not going to get any of my gold because we don't need to do that. It's 95% uh, success chance anyway. We don't need any. <laughs> Mental break again. I'll bite my lip and stay focused. I don't really want to do any of this stuff. Go oh, train healer. Let's have a quick look at our guy. It's been, it's been so long since I've played this. I can barely even remember who's who. We've still got a few prisoners in here as well. Let's see. We'll see if we can ransom them after. We've already got a good healer. That's okay. We'll just leave it at that. Ah, there we caught those bandits. Made fairly swift work of them. And recovered some loot. Get Got some prestige as well. Nice. That'll teach him to raid our lands. Um, as well as that, actually, let's have a quick look. At this, yeah, we've got some quite a lot of uh, instability issues. This looks the worst. Let's let's do Gowrie. Gowrie? I think that's how we say it. Probably. We lost our court jester. We'll disband that out. Uh, so we've got some gold of Duke Ulf and some grandeur and some other bits and pieces. Our court grandeur is now level seven. Nice. We should feudalize St. Johnston. Which one's St. Johnston? So we're going to pop a spider in her bed and hope it does its job. There we are. Dead. Excellent. So we can now find someone else for him. Princess Perrine of France. Now it might be handy to be married to the Princess of France. She's 29. How old is he? 27. <coughs> she was married to that dude first. She had no children, though, which is concerning. We'll get him a lot of prestige. Uh... Mm. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's a good match. Just few guys, St. Johnston. Where, where is St. Johnston? No, ah, this. Mm, 
500. Let's do it. I mean, we haven't got much. I mean, Lever with not much money, but I think it makes sense to feudalize these places. Uh, okay. Prince Edward II, our brother. He holds a duchy. That could be a problem. I bet he's going to want a piece of his land when uh, when I die. Doesn't think much of us either. The spy master. Hmm. All right. Well. Anyway. Can't remember what I was going to check now. <laughs> What if we go High Crown Authority, or do we already have that? Ah, uh, we must already have High Crown Authority. So we could go to Absolute Crown Authority, but that means direct vassal opinion minus 30. We'll get more money in levies, but uh, rulers can designate their heir. Now that could be handy, of course, but I think the opinion drop is a bit much, especially if we're going to have a new king on the throne shortly. We lost our war horse. Just, we haven't got the money to pay on that. So our grandson married the princess of uh, France. I might give our line eventual claim to the kingdom of France, of course, through her if they have any children, which you know would be nice. Now, with him being an intrigue character, we could also maybe pop out some uh, bastards if required. We'll see. See how that goes. I'm going to speed this up a bit. Court Granger's at level 6, so we lost some. Our sister Eadbird died. She was 72. Married to this dude. To what? How was she married to a Muslim? Oh, brother-in-law? I have no idea. No idea. Another leper in our family here? This is our granddaughter, and she is like the, the despot of Crete's wife. Interesting. So our family spread all over the place, really. Let's see, what can we do here? We're going to hold court. <clears throat> Gesture for the first line to approach. A peasant man from the castle of Morgan is brought before me, and no matter what the guards do, he will not stop dancing, trailing blood from mangled feet. What? I cannot cease, my lord. None of us can until we collapse. Please help us. Hmm. My sister Dorothy is certain that the citizens are afflicted by an excess of blood, causing an imbalance in the humours. My patriarch, Ethelwolf, on the other hand, insists that it is a curse sent by St. John the Baptist to punish the peasants. Dancing? Sounds delightful. Next. <laughs> uh, so they would get dancing plague. We'll lose a bit of money and a bit of growth, but we would also lose stress, and we're quite stressed. Pray for the deliverance. Bring out the leeches. Uh, I'm just going to go with that one. I will lose a bit of stress. <laughs> Let them have the dancing disease. My vassal, Duke Ethelwolf, can barely contain his rage, erupting, Something must be done about the Gaelic outsider. He gest gest gesticulates wildly. I have had quite enough of Duke Male Coinine and his ridiculous customs. Everything about them is alien to West Germanic virtues. It is time for your foreign subjects to adopt the mores of their betters. We can eat dread by making them all Anglo-Saxon. Every non-Anglo-Saxon vassal will lose 10 opinion. Every Gaelic county in Britannia will be harder to integrate. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we want that. I mean, I do. I would like everything to be Anglo-Saxon, but this is going to make it more difficult to, to do that. Ah. Uh. 
My guest Borgoyne approaches my throne with a smirk on her face and bows deeply. Greetings, your majesty. During my recent trip to the Kingdom of France, I learned some fascinating tidbits about several of King Ergoran's subjects. I'd be happy to share these with you for a price. 280. Uh, be gone. My business here is done, right? That was crap, really. Cork grandeur. Can we do anything? Uh... Costs a lot of money. Let's do it. We've got Hort. Oh, whatever it was going off before I could read it. Anyway, our court's now very grand. To the implacable Emperor Alfred of Britannia, I call on you to honor the alliance and join me in the peasant uprising. What? Where's the uprising? I mean, I'm not seeing much of an uprising going on here at all. In fact, I'm not seeing any uprising. What the heck? Spired person can be sponsored. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know why it's showing me this tutorial. I've already done this. Yeah, we'll sponsor it. The book will be about warfare. And then hopefully it'll give uh, our heir, when he comes to the throne, a little boost in military skills since he's pretty weak in that. We can't raise 20, We can't raise 22,000 men. I mean, that's obviously substantial. Uh, we've got another perk. I've just been kind of working through these because I, I thought we were nearly going to die, but we're still about. We're 70 now. We're going to let her decide what the topic's going to be. And uh, we're being raided again. Minus 55. It's proven very difficult to vassalize these guys up here. They don't want it at all. Minus 63 for him. Uh Maybe we can start swaying one of these dudes to see, see if that does anything. He's still here as well. He's 87. And he's got a pox. We're going to get some gold off the head of faith. That's going to... 809. So that's more than doubling our money. Can ransom her for 15 might as well uh, we can create all these kingdoms and duchies but I don't really I really don't want to oh, Stuart died he was really good as well she sucks uh Let's give it to this guy. My lord, my beneficiary, Benilde, smiles and gestures me over with ink-stained hands. The book is finished. I hope the completed work sh overshadows my lack of knowledge on the subject. Great. Uh, <clears throat> I'm impressed. All right. So it doesn't really give us much. <laughs> Just a book for the court. Okay. Sister Dorothy died. No longer our court physician or antiquarian. So let's have a quick look to replace these people.
I'm concerned that they still haven't had another child. <sighs> so basically, we want to run this episode till we get to the new king, and then we'll see where we're at. The new emperor, even, not king. How is this guy still alive? <laughs> Well, we're going to take what's ours anyway. We're going to take this, the county. Which one was it? Groningen. Groningen, or however you say it. I've given him all opportunities to, uh, you know, to join us peacefully, but he wouldn't have it. So instead, we'll crush him and take his land. A lot of money to raise our troops. Shouldn't take very long. Yep, pretty easy. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, I seized the one language manual after the siege of Swallow. Nice. Okay, well, let's enforce our demands here. So be it. That takes us down here. I mean, we're over the uh, the Duchy Holden. Uh, over our holding limit, so we'll have to change that over, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to grant that to our nephew here. He's intelligent. I think that's a, probably a decent move. Let's disband this expensive army. Ah, another legacy thing. Is this new? Customs. I can't remember seeing that one before. I'm going to go with mostly fair. I think that's uh, probably a decent one to have here. Plus five popular opinion. It should help our new king when he comes in. Our new emperor. To feel, to, for, for his people to feel more. I can't, I can't see where this peasant uprising even is. Uh, fail to sway him again. I'm going to send him a gift, 2037, 23 opinion. Put him in the plus. Uh, let's call a hunt. Sound the horn. Excellent. So we've got a boar's head. Ooh, faction created against us. The Earl of Ennis has given rise to the Irish Catholic populists. Okay. Not very powerful. Are we dead? <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of little decisions to make here, but uh, yeah, that's, that's all right. I mean, let's have a look. Emperor Alfred II died age 74, and we ruled from 1027 to 1073, so that's 45 years. It's not a bad innings for a reign, is it? Uh, died of old age on the 12th of April, 1073. Cultural head, dreaded, uh, exalted among men, faithful, martial lifestyle, and we fought in 20 wars. So that's this this guy. I feel like I've been this guy for a long time in this game. Um, so Emperor Alfred II of Britannia has found peace in Christ's embrace at seventy four years of age. He died of old age. Known to be an exceptional strategist, he spent many of his days examining fields and drilling his troops. Emperor Alfred ascends the throne. Beautiful beyond words, his appearance will have foreign dignitaries groveling at his feet. All right. So we're going to continue as Alfred the Third. So we can see straight away we've gone from being able to raise twenty-two thousand troops to fourteen thousand. That's because of his poor martial skill, poor stewardship skills. But he's actually got twenty there. Um, but that, like the numbers are pretty concerning, and he still hasn't had another. 
another child. She's 34 now, and that is pretty damn concerning, if I'm honest. Uh, bisexual, okay. I want to see, since so since we can't, we haven't got a son, we need to try and make a matrilineal marriage here, but with someone half decent. This could be something for the next episode. Let's just uh, quickly set this stuff up. I'm going to obviously get rid of all this crap at the top. He's working on Intrigue. We have got 20 in Intrigue. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, okay. That's actually all right. We're going to go with the Temptation Focus. So we get 20 extra fertility. And hopefully get some children on the go. Uh, so next we'll go probably for this with more fertility and then see if we can get a son. I mean, obviously women can inherit in this, but it, it causes some issues and uh, it's not really what you want. I don't think um, anyway. Uh, okay, let's just uh, we'll appoint our chancellors, uh, councillors even. Yeah, he's all right. I mean. Uh, ah, 28. So he's one of our bodyguards. 28 is pretty good. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll, uh, yeah, so that's going to increase to 15,300. That's not bad. Spymaster. Uh, ooh. Yeah, so this guy, he wants the Earl of Warwickshire. Uh, he's ambitious and arrogant. And we do not want him as our spy master, basically. We're not putting a guy with minus 93 on in that position. Even if he has got 16. We'll give it to this guy instead, Prince Edward II. Uh, he only, it's only minus 59, so if we give him that seat, that'll take the minus 40 for one seat on the council straight off that. And I think that's a better option than, than this guy. It takes it to minus 9. I mean, most people don't like us too much. He, he quite likes us, but on the whole... It's difficult when you come to the new throne. Right, so he got the Kingdom of Scotland. I'm not entirely sure why, but he's, he's our vassal, so like it doesn't really matter. What does he actually control? Let's just... All right, so just our Scottish lands, right? right that makes sense. And, um... But other than that, I think everything is pretty much still the same as it was. And that's fine. <laughs> this guy's still here at the age of 90. I don't think I've ever seen a character that old in this. Be interesting to see if he makes 100. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's the 12th of April, 1073. We are a new king. We've got all sorts of gear here as well. Uh, lots of different things. Uh, let's get let's go to fine regalia again. That's going to give us uh, pres not prestige. Uh, it's going to give us more uh, fertility, and uh, we really need a son. I suppose we should probably give some of these things away. I'm going to give him Lucio's sword. There you go. That should keep him sweet. He had a claim on it. Oh, we mount that skull, uh, the the boar's head. And there it is. Excellent. All right, then. So we've set up a new emperor. We are Emperor Alfred the Third Alfredson of Britannia, thirty-two years of age, married to Empress Perrine of Britannia, but she's got claims to the French throne. Uh, I'm going to set away a language learning scheme. It's only forty-two percent, but. Oh, I think maybe that's a decent chance. But actually, didn't we get... Didn't we get something for language learning? Let's just have a quick look at that before I wrap this up. 
And they were calm, brave, and ambitious. Intricate web weaver, comely, and we're a warlike courtier. Oh, we were, I guess. Now we're the emperor. Fertility plus 10. Wessex Saga. War oh, so we've already got that. Um, it was still not really that high a chance of success, but let's try it. 42% is not amazing, but, you know, <laughs> we can give it a go. Let's give it a try. So, yeah, we're a new king, and I think we're going we're gonna to consolidate for a couple of years, and then I would really like to press on those Muslim invaders in the south. And see if we can drive them out of Europe. All right. So, that's it for today's episode of Crusader Kings. We've got a new emperor on the throne, and we'll be pressing on. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra for a bit.